Now we're going to talk about inverse hyperbolic functions. And since I chuckled pretty much through the hyperbolic function video because it's a mouthful trying to get that all out when you're talking about derivatives, I'm pretty sure I'll be doing that today on this video too. So again, this is a very, very brief introduction to how to take the derivative of an inverse hyperbolic function. There's not going to be any explanation of where it comes from or proofs or limits. That's all going to be in a later section for transcendental functions. But I've had students ask about just taking the derivative of these. So this is a very short video, very straightforward to the point. All the extra details that sort of fill in all the blanks will be in a much later video. So let's get busy. These are the derivatives of the inverse hyperbolic functions. And again, the software that I use that works great on a piece of paper has left these negatives. Just very, very light where you can just barely see them. But you have a book or a book online or something that has all these in there. So let's do a few of these and let's talk about why is... Let me write this down so I can concentrate on saying it. All right. The inverse hyperbolic cosine of 3x. All right. So we're going to take the derivative and the derivative function that we're going to use. And hopefully your teacher is going to provide you with a little formula sheet. For these. Now. So remember that whatever is in here goes in here, and then you square it, all right? So be careful what's going to go where. So the derivative is, thank goodness 1 is a 1, and I've got my square root. And then in there where the x, where the x squared goes, I'm going to put 3x, because that's this part. So I'm going to put 3x and then say I'm going to square it plus, that's a minus 1, minus 1. My computer's locked up for a second. Seems like it does this right at the beginning of every video. And then we'll continue writing when it gets unstuck. And I should sing a song or something so that it keeps you entertained there. Minus 1. See, you avoided the song. <laughs> Okay, then you loop back in and take the derivative of the inside, and the inside is this 3x right here. So this would be times 3. So you would end up with 3 over the square root of 9x squared minus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. And no... That 3 that's in the numerator does not cancel into the 9 that's underneath the square root sign because of these this little binomial that the minus sign gives it. You'd have to factor the 9 out of both terms and then square root and get it out, and then you could cancel. But there's not a 9 in both terms. So let's try another problem. And we'd have y is... Let me write this down so that I can concentrate on saying this correctly. So it's a power rule, and inside it is an inverse hyperbolic sign. So the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sign is 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Now remember that this is going to go in place of this. So it's going to go in here. So be careful because you've got a square that was given to you and then the square that's inside the formula, All right? So let's get busy. Remember, it's a power rule. So the power rule says bring the 3 down, leave the inside alone. Take 1 off the power. Loop back in and take the derivative of the inside. 
and the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine of x, right, is 1 over the square root. And what's going to go in here is x squared squared again plus 1. And don't forget to loop back in and take the derivative of the inside of this. Okay, see where all the little bits and pieces came from? All right. Don't forget your one. All right. I got so busy on the loop back in, I forgot to write the one down. So when you clean this up, you could say, well, this 3 and the 2x could kind of work together. So I'd have 6x over the square root of x to the 4th plus 1 times this inverse hyperbolic sine of x squared squared. Now, you know, there's all sorts of ways you could have rearranged that. I don't know that one's better than the other, but I hope that one kind of helped a little bit. Let's do y is equal to, hang on a minute while I write this down. All right. This is the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of 3x to the fourth power. <laughs> okay. You just, you just got to sometimes congratulate yourself on being able to say something. All right. Now, again, let's track what we're going to do with this inverse hyperbolic cosecant. So this 3x is going to be in that location. So it's actually going to be in this location and this location. So now i got to keep up with it two places. So here we go. So it's the power rules on the outside, because remember on the chain rule you work from the outside in. So you bring the 4 down. You leave the inside alone. You take 1 off the power. All right. And then you're going to loop back in and take the derivative of this right there. So the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosecant. <laughs> All right is minus 1 over the absolute value of 3x times the square root of 3x squared. Nope, I must go in the wrong place. 3x squared plus 1. Then you're going to loop back in and take the derivative, because this was your inside part of the inverse hyperbolic cosecant, right? So you're going to loop back in and take the derivative of that, which is 3. All right, so what you have now is the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of 3x cubed, right? times a minus 12 over the absolute value of 3x square root of 9x squared plus 1. Now, do you see this absolute value of 3x? Well, the, I don't know exactly what x is, right? Um, but I know what 3 is. And the absolute value of 3 is 3. So I can take that absolute value of 3 factor that out essentially, cancel it into the top, and have the absolute value of x square root of 9x squared plus 1. And that's where I'm going to stop. All right. And then let's do y is equal to the hyperbolic tangent, but it's going to be the inverse hyperbolic tangent of the natural log of t. Why? Just because we can. <laughs> okay. 
So in this case, the outside is the inverse hyperbolic tangent. So the derivative with respect to t, well, let's go, let's do with the one that's normally written, d of x of the inverse hyperbolic is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So whatever this is goes right there, which is the natural log of t. So y prime is, you take the derivative of the outside, okay, and you would have it's 1 minus the natural log of t squared. Loop back in and take the derivative of the inside. So this is 1 over t. So this is 1 over t times 1 minus ln t squared. This is y prime. Okay. All right. I hope that helps. Again, this is very brief. This is not supposed to be, you know, the beginning and the end of what, what, what exactly an inverse hyperbolic function is. This is just a brief how to take a derivative of it. And um, then we'll have a transcendental section after we have the graphing section. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, I will see you at the next video.